What do we have here? Yep. Yep. It's here. Shadow Grey look familiar? One of the last weeks of Shadow Grey ever produced. Likely the last week. Yeah. Okay, so first, let's go through the car. It's a base car, 1LT. The only options I got, black wheels. These are the standard wheels, but black. Um, red calipers, bright red calipers to be specific, if you didn't know the differences. And red seat belts. But, in order to start a video with a C8 Corvette, you know what you gotta do. Stradman, learn a lesson. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. So when you start the car like that, I've learned now that none of the screens stay on. So what you gotta do is press the brake, start, and the screen comes off. It is quite hot out, but we gotta show you that motor. With the C7, it was as easy with this. It's just in the back trunk. There you can see the 6.2 liter V8 doing its stuff. C8 owners, make sure you don't put anything back here. It gets really hot. Uh, your dipstick is right there. And that's about all you need to know on the outside. Okay, so excuse the absurdly loud AC. But the whole quality of this car is just way better than the C7. Even though the way the door is closed, just every little thing. The gear select is pretty cool. I missed the stick. But here's the squircle. One of the things I thought would be really weird, but I actually really like. 16.7 miles to gallon. The car's been warming up for like 15 minutes. I wasn't paying attention. I had to do something quickly. And it's still at 16.7 miles a gallon. And that was in the city. On the highway, we're getting 29.5. Um, it's pretty insane, and the modes are even more insane. So this is my mode, and that's how I have this set up. When I want to go faster, I press Z mode, and there it is. It's like a computer game. The whole car, I love it. Now I'm going to take it out of Z mode, because we're just going for a quick little drive, but the way the screen's configured, so the, how it's that configurable, there's touring. Let's put it back into my mode, and then we're good. Now let's just go for a drive. It's going to be a quick drive. But first, little thing. Here's the red seatbelt I was just talking about. The rear view of this car is absolutely awful. It's really bad. But the side mirrors are much better and the front's so much shorter, it's a lot easier to park face in than the C7. Uh, the controversial switches, I really like them. I think they're pretty easy. But let's put that thing on Android Auto. Oh wait, it might not work because I don't think my phone's in the car. It might work, I don't know. Let's get ready to go and I'll see you guys in a sec. Thing I'll immediately say I don't love is the scale of the back of the camera stuff looks like it's coming up much faster than it actually is, at least in my opinion. The DCT so far, as you could probably see right now, the car has 708 miles on it. The car was picked up from Hendrick Chevrolet in North Carolina, and they're an amazing dealer. They got the car really fast. Shout out to them if you're looking for a C8, get on their wait list, and you guys will not be uh, disappointed. The customer service is absolutely phenomenal. Could not be better. Um, but yeah, the drive back was great. The C7 drove great down. We had to drive it down, trade it in. C7 drove great. Um, this car drove that much better. Just the steering, the ride, the power, miles per gallon even. But yeah, it's just ridiculous. You gotta watch a car these roads. I mean, I'm not going fast, as you know. This is not very big roads. People I know for, since I was little live right here. Don't need to hit anybody. But the, the C7 would lean as you go into a corner. That's just flat, 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 flat. And that's it. Just flat. The, there's nothing, there's no road lean or anything. Obviously, I'm not going fast. I'm going 30. But you can tell a normal car, you do that turn at like 20. That's like 40. Um, it's just flat. And that's in my mode, which is just regular touring suspension and engine. So all it's really changed is the steering and the uh, exhaust. And I changed the brake feel a little bit. I like the sporty brake feel. I have in the middle setting. I haven't tried track yet, but I might. I just figured it seems a little dumb to have that aggressive braking. But the brakes are amazing. I had a little squeal when the car was new, but now that they're broken in, it seems to have gotten away. Uh, quality issues, nothing really. Some like weird electrical bug where when I started the car once, both trunks opened. The roof makes a little noise sometimes, but the quality of this car is just so far beyond the C7, it's unbelievable. The steering feel, I think, is way better than a 458. I think it's almost on par with the 720. I'm gonna drive the 720 this weekend and let you guys know, but if it's as good as the 720, that's insane. That's just absolutely nuts. One thing I really don't like, there's no way other than putting the car in track, which I'm not going to do because it rides really rough, or in Z mode, even, I don't really want to have the engine in track all the time, 
it goes into V4 mode. With the C7, it wouldn't do that unless you put an Eco because it was a stick. But I know with the C7, it had a lot of issues. The automatics had a lot of issues with V4 mode uh, and long-term reliability. So it's a little concerning. Also, the car just sounds so strange in V4 mode, like it is right now. Uh, but other than that, no real complaints. Those are the little things. The mirrors, the side mirrors are amazing on this car. The handling is just ridiculous. I mean, these are pretty sharp turns and just flat. I couldn't miss the road if I wanted to. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's unbelievable. The technology that goes into this car, I'm not saying it's a cheap car, but compared to what, it, what it's ought to be, it also sounds so good. I'm barely getting on it. And there's the speed limit. Just the speed limit, instantly. I'll show you guys after what it's really like when you nail it. It's unbelievable. Um, these are just initial thoughts, quick five minute drive, but it's just unbelievable. The ride comfort is nothing I like anything I've experienced. It's on par with a 720, I think. The 720 has the crazy suspension, so normally I'd give it that, and right now, the 720 in my mind, it has 4,000 miles, so the tire's a little worn, and that does affect the ride, so I can't uh, fairly judge it, I don't think. But the person I drove down with uh, did say the 720 does not ride as well. As I don't believe that in any way whatsoever. Okay, so now we're getting closer to the end of the drive. Quickly, I'm going to put in Z mode. I don't know if you guys can see the screen. I don't think you can. But I'm quickly going to put in Z mode. The way I have my Z mode is steering and track, although I always have my steering and track thanks to my mode. Engine shift track. I, I want to leave it on sport, but... It's a little too unaggressive for like pretty good driving. Okay guys, so I just realized the GoPro went out for no apparent reason earlier. I honestly don't know what I said in between the time it went out and now, so I might repeat myself. I apologize if I do, but honestly the GoPro was a little annoying with that. But what I did was I put it in Z mode, I did a full launch and basically talked about the differences between this and the C7. So the C7, oh, I just realized I'm in touring mode, that's why the steering's so light, oh, that's annoying. Okay, now I'm in my mode. Now that feels good. I'm going to put it in Z mode at the stop sign as long as there's no one there. I'm not going to floor the car around anybody. I'm not even speeding. I'm just getting to the speed limit. But uh, it's not something I want to do. Um, but yeah, around these turns, it just devours the C7. It just kills it. It's just not even close. Um, the power difference is only 45, apparently. I think on the dyno, it actually has proved to be a little more... But, obviously, just the traction you get out of a mid-engine car with, like, this. Even, my car is all seasons because it's not a Z51. They started doing that with these cars, with the C8. I don't know why they did that, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. Um, yeah, it's not, like, a big deal. But, you know, I'm not getting to the track yet, so not affecting me at all. That was really frustrating that that pass did not get shown, because now you guys are going to kind of in circles a little bit. I'm not going to film this whole part because uh, when I get to flooring the car, I want you guys to see that and I don't want to take up too much more time with this, but basically what I was saying when the camera was out, I'm pretty positive. I was talking about the uh, C7 and the reason it was sold again, and it's basically its own greatness. It, it appreciated and it got sold. It was that simple. I revved the car a little bit before, but you guys can not hear that either. Whatever, what am I going to do? It's a little annoying, but, you know. So when I was filming earlier and you guys didn't hear it, I was talking about the DCT. And it's got some quick shifts in it, but I don't think it's as consistent as the McLaren, or actually even when it's on as fast. Like, here's some downshifts. There's fourth to third, third to second. I mean, it is lightning quick, but there are times where it's a little clunky. Um, there are times where it's just not as smooth or fast. It's just, it's not perfect. But at this price point, compared to a 720, let's say, or even a 458, 488, it's huge difference. Um, like in price you can't deny that and that makes up for you know not being perfect uh but <laughs> the dct is plenty good i do think it's actually quite a bit smoother than the 458 and quite a bit faster it's i i don't know i i don't know if it's a fair comparison because the 458 came out in 2010 it was basically the first dual clutch it did 
pioneer the path for cars like this, but um, it's unfair to say that that car is as good as this transmission-wise, and it's so much more money. So, you know what, I will give this car its props. The DCT reliability, I don't know. If you go on the Corvette forums, you see a lot about porosity in the casings, you see different issues, cars not going into even gears or reverse. It's a first year car, this is the second year, this is a 2021 obviously, but there's really no excuse for it. GM's had a lot of time to work on this car, but at the price point, that's the only excuse you're going to get basically. It, the fact that it is at the price point that it's at. If there's no one ahead, we're going to give a good Z mode, and then we're going to put a manual and give it a punch from the stop sign. If there is somebody ahead, then we're going to have to do another loop of this, and we would be so good first take, and damn GoPro, man. Okay, I put in manual. We'll see if anybody's here. It's in first. Nothing stopping the car from going and going. And there's a fax car. I'm just gonna go slow, pass it, and then floor it. Second. This car, you can shift really early. The gears are not that long. They're just pretty short. Okay, it's in first. I'm gonna slow down a lot. And then, Z mode, first gear. There's the speed limit. Like that. It's just unbelievable. I didn't floor it. Keep in mind, I'm not trying to beat the car up. I've already done a pull that you guys didn't even see. I really hope that's recording. Okay, so even after all of the screw-ups from the GoPro, I think we still got a good video. And the car is running at 196, which is a little warm for it. So I wanted to give you guys some revs, but I'm not going to rev it too hard. So if you guys want to hear you, I'll put you out by the exhaust. That's 4,000 car as you can see red lines over six so it's not bad uh the whole infotainment screen is really really good i mean you could literally do anything you have your wi-fi hotspot you have i have a samsung so android auto everything's just pretty good um yeah that's all i could say but uh everything the car is just perfect but i guess you guys know that already so basically the c8 is here it is ridiculously fast it was an amazing decision, and yeah, it has its little imperfections, but, I mean, what car are you going to buy instead of this? I really want to know. You guys drop in the comments, if you have something that has the same price point as this, and this stupid used market right now, that, I mean, there's a reason this car is a wait list. People have now waited for three years, because there are people that didn't get on the 20 list or the 21 list, and I feel so bad for those guys, but you just got to find the right dealer. Kerbeck is a good dealer. McMulligan's a big dealer. Kerbeck just sold those, so it'd be a little figure out there. Uh... But McMulkin's a great dealer, but I deal with Hendrick Chevrolet. They would be the best bet for me. Uh, McMulkin's a huge dealer. You might not get this. You're going to get the great customer service still, and you it, you should get a car in eight months. But if I were you guys, I'd order through Hendrick Chevrolet if you're on the East Coast in North Carolina. It was also a great trip back. It was an easy way to break in the car. As you guys just saw, it already has 700 miles. Basically, I love it. And let me know what you think about it in the comments below.